same way that the DR Horton superintendents are part of the construction team. They might not be swinging the hammer or um, holding the nail, but yourself and the other superintendents on behalf of DR Horton on the project are part of the construction team as well, right? Check to the form. Yes. Are you familiar with the fact that Chapter 49 is the statute under which um, the legislature has authorized licenses like yours to exist? Yes, I see that. Okay. So I want to look here at this section that we've got here from Chapter 49. It's Section 49.105 Definitions. And I want to go down to the definition at section five for secondary qualifying agent. Okay. This would be the definition that describes your role as a secondary qualifying agent on behalf of DR Horton who pulled permits at projects like Windsor Lakes, would it not? Object to the form. Yes, it would. Do you see here um, at section five of chapter 489-105 where we have the definition of secondary qualifying agent and it defines the secondary qualifying agent as means a person who possesses the requisite skill, knowledge, and experience and has the responsibility to supervise, direct, manage, and control construction activities on a job for which he or she has obtained a permit and whose technical and personal qualifications have been determined by investigation and examination as provided in this part as attested by the department. I see that, yes. So I want to focus here on this middle phrase where it says that the secondary qualifying agent has the responsibility to supervise, direct, manage, and control the construction activities on a job for which he or she has obtained a permit. You see that section? I see that sentence. Okay. So would you agree then that your role as a secondary qualifying agent whose license was used to pull permits to construct all the townhomes at the Windsor Lake townhome community that were built by D.R. Horton, that under Chapter 49, you then had the responsibility to supervise, direct, manage, and control the construction activities on that job? Check to the form. Yes, I see that. And you'd agree with that characterization? Yes. So would this be um, the installation details that you would have expected that um, DR Horton and its subcontractors were following for the installation of the windows in the wood framed openings at Windsor Lakes? Yes. Okay. Um, did you ever authorize anyone to deviate from the um, details that we see on this sheet here of sheet 12 of 13 of exhibit 25 with respect to the Windsor Lakes project? No. Okay. Would they have needed your authorization in order to deviate from the details that we see here on sheet 12 of 13? Would they need my authorization? Right, you're the license holder. If you're expecting yes. something to be installed in a certain way, would yes, someone need correct. to get permission from you? They would? Yes. Okay. And that never happened? No. Okay. Do you see here, um, and this particular set of instructions, this only applies to the wood framed openings, right? Because it's got house wrap and flashings and we don't, you don't install that, that type of system on the first four block areas? Yes, correct. Okay. So do you see here in step seven where it says install metal drip cap? Yes. Is the metal drip cap intended to serve in this installation as a through wall flashing? through wall flashing. Right, so the, when the stucco is installed over the window after the installation of the flashings, we would still see that the drip cap comes out and extends past the window to allow for drainage? 
Yes, you would see the edge of the drip cap. And that's the purpose of the metal drip cap is it's a flashing component, correct? Yes, it is a flashing. Okay. Um, would it have been your expectation that this metal drip cap flashing would have been installed at the heads of all the windows in the wood framed openings at Windsor Lakes? Yes. Okay. If that was not done, would that be a violation of the Florida Building Code with respect to the Windsor Lake project? Check to the form. It would be a violation of our standards. Okay. And when you say our standards, manual. meaning DR Horton standards? Um, yes. And so it would have been DR Horton's expectation for all the townhomes at Windsor Lakes that um, rigid head flashing was installed at the heads of all the windows in the wood framed openings on the second floor? Yes. If that was not done, would that be problematic? Check to the form. Yes. That's not something that you can install after the stucco has been installed, right? A drip cap head flashing? No. In order to install that type of flashing, we'd have to remove the stucco in some way? Yes. Okay. Are you able to see um, the top or the head of any of the windows? Yes. And the photographs on 410? Yes, I do. Okay. And can you see on that page um, that there is not a drip cap head flashing installed on the window um, on page 410? Yeah, it does not appear to be there. And there should be one there? Yes. Okay. Now, is Exhibit 49 an email chain that you sent um, relating to the Windsor Lakes project? Yes. Okay. The first email on the chain is from you, and what date is that email? August 6, 2014. Okay. So this would have been the time during the time frame that you were serving as a superintendent on the project? Yes. Okay. And who did you send the um, email to in August of 2014? Um, to a, a gutter, somebody who does gutters and soften. So at this point, you're, you're walking around the house um, after the um, stucco has been installed and painted and the roofs have been installed and you saw that there was um, an area where water was collecting um, and thought that could be an issue and wanted to have that water redirected with a gutter? Yes, that's what it appears. Okay. And you included in your email some photographs of um, the building that you were looking at at that time? Yep. Okay. And some of those photographs we can see um, like on the first page that you pulled, um, I think it's the second page of the email chain, we can see a window installed yeah. in the frame opening on the second floor. Yeah. Do we also see that in that window installed on the second floor that there's no through wall head flashing or drip cap head flashing installed on that window? It's possible. It's hard to see from, again, from this photo. It's just not close enough. Well, if there was through all head flashing installed, it would need to go past the stucco to be effective, right? It would go past the stucco, yes. And we don't see anything extending past the stucco in that photograph. No, I don't see so. So when you were walking around this particular building at Windsor Lakes, in 2014, shouldn't you have noticed that there was no through wall head flashing installed in this location and caused that to have been corrected before these townhomes were sold to buyers? Check to the form. I suppose I don't catch everything. Well, Would it surprise you to learn that at Windsor Lakes that there is no drip cap or through wall head flashing installed on any of the windows in the second floor? Check any to of the, the townhomes yeah, that Dear Horton built? Check to the form. Yes, it would. Okay. Even if you missed one building or one unit, Dr. Horton shouldn't have missed them all. Shouldn't have missed all of them, should it? Check to the form would say yes. Yes, that they should not have. Should not have. Is it your understanding that within ASTM C1063, 
that there's a requirement for how to install the lath fasteners to attach the stucco lath to the wall? Yes. Okay. Um, does that standard that's incorporated in the Florida Building Code, ASTM C1063, require the lath fasteners um, be affixed at intervals of seven inches on center into the framing members? Yes. Okay. Would you have been aware of that requirement that the Florida Building Code requires that the lath fasteners um, be attached to the framing members at seven inches on center as opposed to randomly in the wall sheathing at the time that Windsor Lakes was being constructed? Yes. Would it have been your expectation then that we shouldn't see a random pattern of lath fasteners if we were to remove the stucco from the exterior walls and look at the back side of the lath? Um, from any of the buildings at Windsor Lakes? Yes. And if the stucco lath fasteners are being installed at seven inches on center, um, they need to be installed into the studs, correct, and not only into the wood sheathing? Yes. Um, if the lath fasteners were installed um, not into the studs and randomly into the wood sheathing, that would be a violation of the Florida Building Code? Check to the form. Yes. And you would have been aware of that fact at the time that D.R. Horton was constructing the townhomes at Windsor Lakes? I'm sorry. I you would have been aware of that fact at the time that D.R. Horton was constructing the townhomes at Windsor Lakes? Check to the form. When I was there, yes. And what about before you came on as superintendent when your license was being used to pull permits for the project, you would have been aware of that fact at that time as well? Check I would to have the form. I would have expected that, yes. Now, are you aware of whether the um, ASTM C1063 standard that's incorporated in the Florida Building Code also requires that the lath fasteners um, embed into the studs at a minimum of three quarters of an inch? Correct. Okay. Given that that's the requirement of the Florida Building Code, the lath fasteners embed into the studs at three quarters of an inch, and we have before we can engage the studs, there are other materials that are installed over the wall assembly, right? The, the lath itself, the house wrap, the black paper, and then the wood sheathing, whether it's OSB, plywood, or something else, right? Yes. Um, is there then a requirement under the Florida Building Code that in order to install the lath, um, and achieve that minimum 3 8 inch embedment into the studs that we would need to use if we're using a staple, an inch and a half long staple? Yes. Okay. If there were staples that were used to install the lath at Windsor Lakes that were less than an inch and a half, those would be an example of a violation of the Florida Building Code? Check to the form. Yes. Okay. So for example, if there were one inch um, if there were lath fasteners that had legs that were one inch long um, used to install the lath at Windsor Lakes, um, that would be a violation of the Florida Building Code? Check to the form. Yes. If there were lath fasteners at Windsor Lakes that were um, installed with legs on the staples that were an inch and a quarter long, those lath fasteners would also be examples of violations of the Florida Building Code? Check yes. to the form. And I want to take a look at the photographs at the top of page 422 of 1,675 of Exhibit 31. There you go. Do you see in the photograph on the top of that page um, where a piece of stucco and lath has been removed from the exterior um, of the wall? Yeah. Okay. And are you able to see any of the lath fasteners um, in the photograph at the top of the page? Yes, I do. Okay. And do you see that there's a, um, a ruler um, next to the lath fastener that depicts the, um, the length of that fastener? Yes. And how long is the lath fastener that was used to attach the stucco in the photograph on the top of that page? Check to the form. It's like yeah. one inch. Okay. And so this photograph um, that we see at the top of the page here, 
would depict a violation of the Florida Building Code at Check. the Windsor Lake community? Check to the form. Say yes. Does it concern you to see this photograph that we're looking at here um, on the top of this page with the last fasteners being installed or one inch long at Windsor Lakes? Yes. And what should have been done here is they should have used an inch and a half fastener to attach the stucco lath? Correct. To the form. Do you also see in that photograph that the stucco is not fully embedded in the lath as required by the Florida Building Code? Yes, I see that. That would be another example of a violation of the Florida Building Code evident in this photograph? Yes. Is that also concerning to you as the license holder whose license was used to pull the permits for this townhome? Yes. Would you agree that the, the members of the Windsor Lake Homeowners Association, that when they were buying their townhomes from D.R. Horton, that there was an expectation on their, on their part that D.R. Horton would have ensured that the construction complied with the Florida Building Code? Check to the form. Yes. Do you think that the members of the Windsor Lakes Townhome Association deserve to have townhomes that were built by D.R. Horton that fully comply with the Florida Building Code's requirements? Check to the form. Yes. Seeing some of the photographs that we went over today, um, does it appear that D.R. Horton didn't live up to the promise that it made to the Windsor Lakes Townhome community's members to build buildings that were in compliance with the Florida Building Code? Check to the form. Yes. Should D.R. Horton have gone back out to the Windsor Lakes community and perform repairs to bring the townhomes up to the standard of the Florida Building Code at any point in time? Check to That's the form. That's not my decision. As the license holder whose license was used to pull permits at the project, do you think that that should have been done? Check to the form. Yes. But isn't it your responsibility that we looked at earlier from the licensing statute where it states that where your license is used to pull a permit, you as the license holder have the responsibility to supervise, direct, and manage the construction? Check yes. to the form. Okay. Doesn't it appear from the photographs that we looked at today that the requirements that apply to you as the license holder were not being complied with on the Windsor Lake prop project by D.R. Horton in that the construction project was not being properly supervised, managed, and directed to ensure compliance to the Florida Building Code? Check to the form. Well, I see that in these few photographs that they were not. That's not to say that the entire project was like that. Well. If every window in the wood-framed openings on the second floor, if none of them have through-all head flashing, would you need to re-evaluate that statement? Check to the form. Don't Okay. Would your answer to that question be yes? Check yes. to the form. Okay. Do you see the section that's titled laugh? Yes, I do. And do you see how D.R. Horton in the set of instructions instructs its stucco installer to use inch and a quarter staples to attach the um, lath to the walls on projects for D.R. Horton? Object to the form. Yes, it does state that. So would this be an example where D.R. Horton is providing an instruction to its stucco subcontractor that if complied with would violate the Florida Building Code? Object to the form. Yes, it would be. Would you agree that Exhibit 26 is a copy of an email chain um, where the first email is an email from you to one of the stucco subcontractors that D.R. Horton was using in your experience, Save on Plastering, Inc., dated Tuesday, April 3rd, 2012? Yes, I see that. Okay. And so you sent this particular email, um, the bottom email that we see at the chain dated Tuesday, April 3rd, 2012, to save on plastering. Is that right? Yes, correct. Okay. And would you have typed this email out yourself? Yes, I would. Okay. 
And would this have been in response to your walking through a job that Savon Plastering was completing for D.R. Horton on the state? That's what it appears, okay. yes. And you were unhappy following the walkthrough of that job with the work that was done by Savon Plastering, is that right? That would be correct. Okay. And you gave them a list of instructions for how to correct their work with respect to the lath installation on this particular project? That would be correct. Okay. Would it be your expectation that all of these notes here for your instructions would also have been followed on the townhomes that were constructed at Windsor Lakes? Yes. You CC'd somebody on your email, Ryan Kramer. Who's Mr. Ryan Kramer? He's our ops manager, operations manager. Um, is Mr. Kramer still with the company? Yes. Um, was he serving as the operations manager um, at this time in 2012 when he sent this email? I would assume, I can't be sure, it, he could have had a different title, could have been construction manager. Okay. Would he have been your direct supervisor at the time you sent this email in 2012? Most likely, yes. Okay. I see in response to this email, we see the second email at the top, right? where Mr. Kramer responds to you and then CCs a number of other people? Yep. Okay. And when Mr. Kramer received your email and he forwarded it to yourself and other individuals, are each of these other individuals employees of D.R. Horton? They were, yes. Okay. Were all of these other individuals superintendents at other projects for D.R. Horton? Um. Could have been assistance, warranty, or um, construction supervisors, yes. Okay. Um, and so Mr. Kramer's response to you, what did he say? Good job, Steve. Guys, this is how we must inspect every home in regards to lath. Make no mistake, if you leave this to the vendor, it will not meet our standards. Thanks. So. Isn't Mr. Kramer making it very clear to yourself and the other members of the D.R. Horton construction team in the Central Florida Division that you need to really look over, like you did in this particular example, the work of the stucco subcontractors? And if you don't do that, that D.R. Horton's aware that it's not going to meet D.R. Horton standards? Check to the form. Um, yes. And in this particular example, Some of the things that you were pointing out that Savon Plastering had failed to do on this particular on this particular job that you were observing was that they failed to properly attach the um, stucco accessories. Yes, that's what it looks like. Okay. They were missing a control joint. Um, yes, there was a control joint missing. They also um, had an issue with how they integrated the control joint with the lath that you were correcting. Um, where is that now? It's in the second sentence of uh, bullet point two for lot 10. Yes, okay, yep. You also pointed out that there was a need to tie the control joints. Yes. Okay. And you specifically pointing out that the control joints did not appear to be loose, floating, and not fastened to the wall with either staples or adhesives? Yes, correct. So do I understand that to mean that it was your expectation that Savon Plastering would be installing the control joints using either wire ties or clips installed at seven inch on center to attach the control joints to the lath? and not to rigidly fasten the control joints to the wall using staples? That is correct. Okay. Is it your understanding that it would be a violation of the ASTM C1063 standard that's incorporated in the Florida Building Code to staple the control joints directly to the wall sheathing as opposed to tying them? Yes, correct. Okay. And so you were instructing the subcontractor 
as to a particular requirement of the code and making sure that they complied. Yes. And your boss, upon seeing that, said, if you don't do that for other projects, it's not going to meet the standards. Check to the form. Yes. What was the number again? I'm sorry. Exhibit 40 that's been previously 40. marked. Okay, thank you. This is an example of a colored isometric detail showing a window installed um, in a wood frame opening that's clad with stucco, right? That's what it looks like, yes. Okay. Same type of construction that was used by D.R. Horton for the second floor of the Windsor Lake townhomes, right? Correct. Okay. Does this photograph show us what should have been done around the windows at Windsor Lakes on the second floor for the areas where the walls are clad in stucco over wood frame? Yes. So I'm going to show you another email. That's been previously marked as Exhibit 27. No. This is an email from Mr. McCarthy, who you testified was the previous superintendent at Windsor Lakes before yourself, correct? Yep. Okay. That's the same Kevin McCarthy? Yes. Okay. There's only one Kevin McCarthy in the Orlando division of D.R. Horton. That I know of, yes. Okay. And in this particular email, he's emailing um, Save on Plastering, one of the stucco subcontractors that D.R. Horton hired to work at the Winter Lakes project. I'm sorry. In this particular again. email, Mr. McCarthy is emailing Save on Plastering, one of the stucco subcontractors that worked at the Windsor Lakes project? Yes. Or rather, they're emailing him. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Now, do you see in this email where Save on Plastering says, per the outcome with Harvey today, for the walk outcome with Harvey today. Do you know who Harvey is? Supervisor for, for Savon Plastering. Okay, so Har Harvey is somebody associated with Savon Plastering? Yes. Okay. So in this email, it says, Kevin, per the walk outcome with Harvey today, you want three quarter inch expansion on top of wire lath and fastened. You also want plaster stops on the windows with backer rod. Is that correct? You see that? I see that's what it says, yes. Doesn't it appear from this email that on June 13th, 2012, Save On Plastering is learning for the first time that it's supposed to be installing these plaster stops and casing beads with backer rods to separate the stucco from similar materials on the windows? Check to the form. Yeah, I can't say that this would be the first time. Well, I mean, that's not clear. He says, you also want plaster stops on the windows with backer rod. Is that correct? Jack to the that's form. That's what it says. Isn't that something that Savon Plastering should have been doing on the buildings that were being built in 2010, 11, and earlier in 2012? Yes. Does it concern you as the license holder for the buildings that were built at Windsor Lakes that in 2012, years after the project has started and townhomes have been complete, that the stucco subcontractor is asking, am I supposed to install casing beads and backer rods to separate the stucco from the window materials? Check yes. to the form. Yes, it does. something they should have been doing for the first few years while the project was being constructed. Check to yeah. the form. Correct. Okay. When D.R. Horton had this email from Save on Plastering, 
Should it have gone back and looked at the townhomes that were previously built to make sure that the casing beads and backer rods were installed on those windows? Because doesn't this tell DR Horton that Stucco subcontractor didn't know what it was supposed to do? Check to the form. It seems to me that's speculation. I don't know if this is the first building they did or subsequent buildings. Okay. If, if Savon Plastering had worked on the buildings that the project built in 2010, 11, and earlier in 2012, should DR Horton have gone back and checked those buildings upon receipt of this email to make sure that there were casing beads installed to separate the stucco from the similar window materials? And any buildings that have been previously built using stucco installed by Save on Plastering. Check to the form. That would be a good practice. Would that have been your expectation of what the company should have done given that you were the license holder whose license was used to pull the permits on the project? Check to the form. Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you a document that's marked previously as Exhibit 22 from the deposition of Lua Velli as the corporate representative of D.R. Horton. Is that the transaction journal? It is. Okay. So Mr. Avelli during his deposition testified that this was um, a transaction journal noting all the payments that were made to DR Horton with respect to the Windsor Lake project to all of its vendors and anyone that it paid any fees to for the project. Um, is there a page number on the page you've turned to? I'm sorry? Is there a page number on the page you turned to? I don't think there's page numbers, but. Unless it's in the upper right hand corner. No, there's no page number. Okay. Um, do you see on the page that I've flagged for you where there's um, some payments being made to save on plastering? Yes. And do you see if there's like a reference number on the right-hand column or the left-hand column? I'm sorry. Reference number. In the left-hand column, I see um, it looks like the task. Okay. Um, and save on plastering, do you see based on those notes is being paid in 2011 to install stucco, is that right? Yes. Okay. And what are the dates of the payments that you see on that sheet for save on plastering? Okay, I'm looking at 11, 15, 2011. And then the last one. Three nine, twenty eleven. Okay. So, more than a year before the email that we just looked at in the prior exhibit, Save on Plastering was working on the job at Windsor Lakes, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. And so, putting all that together. Now that we know based on this particular exhibit that Savon Plastering was working on the job before um, the email that they sent to Mr. McCarthy in June of 2012, it would have been your expectation that someone should have gone back from DR Horton to look at the buildings that were built between 2011 and this June of 2012 email to make sure that they were done properly um, upon receipt of this email. Check to the form. Yes. Okay. Are you aware that prior to DR Horton hiring AB Design and Weintraub to prepare this manual for the use on its projects going forward, that DR Horton had found out that some of the projects that it had built had stucco that was installed over the wood framing? that was completed in violation of the Florida Building Code? I would say yes. Okay. Do you remember any of the, any of the projects, even if you don't remember all of them? 
we had a lot of projects going on. So I know that um, we replaced stucco in several projects um, because deficiencies were found. Okay. For those other projects in Florida where DR Horton had uncovered that the stucco installation work over wood framing was not installed in compliance with Florida Building Code. For those projects where it found that that had occurred, DR Horton went back out to some of those projects and replaced the stucco assembly over wood frame? Yes, we replaced stucco over wood frame okay. in several communities. Um, do you know how many communities that happened in? I could only guess at least a half a dozen. Okay. Were those other communities where stucco was removed by DR Horton um, and replaced, were those communities where your license was used to pull the permits for the initial construction? Most likely. Okay. Did that concern you as the license holder that there were projects where DR Horton had to go back and remove and replace the entire stucco assembly after they had been constructed, considering that those buildings were built using your license to pull the permits? Yes, it did. Okay. Um, after that happened, where DR Horton was going out to other projects that they had found out that had been installed in violation of the Florida Building Code, was it then the expectation of the company that the standards and supervision over its jobs were going to increase to make sure that these types of things didn't happen again? Check to the form. We had tried to increase our focus on it, and that's why we ended up with a third party inspecting. Okay. Was that also the reason why this Exhibit 25 was commissioned by AB Design and Weintraub so that DR Horton would now be giving its superintendents more information and tools to ensure that problems like what happened with the other project where the stucco was involved in, installed in violation of the Florida Building Code didn't reappear and reoccur? Check to the form. Yes. Okay. Do you see on page 103 at line 21 through 24 where I asked the question, or, yeah, line, line 21 through 24 on page 103, I asked the question, you said you were using an inch and a quarter laugh fasteners because you couldn't find a gun that would work for an inch and a half staple. Did you ever find that you were able to use an inch and a half staples? And his answer on the next page, on page 104 at lines one through two, was we wanted to do so, but it was not possible, we tried. You see that? Yes, I see that. Okay. I want to go down a bit on page 104, and you see the question starting at line 8 through 10? Yes, I and see that. And the question is, well, I want to be very clear here. Did you ever use inch and a half staples or not? And then his answer is below that. Do you see the answer below that at lines 11 through 13? I see that, yes. And Mr. Montoy's answer is no, because that does not mean that an inch and a quarter did not work well. That paper doesn't say so, okay. You see where he says that? I see that. Okay. Does this testimony from Mr. Montoya, the owner of Savon Plastering, who is one of your stucco subcontractors on the Windsor Lakes project, help confirm for you that his company, in fact, did not install any inch and a half staples in the project? Check to the form. That's what I read. Okay. Yes. Is that concerning to you as the license holder for the project? Check yes. To the form. Okay. And so, where we saw earlier where counsel for Savon Plastering was asking you questions about a ruler trying to imply that the ruler might not be accurately measuring the lath fasteners, that doesn't seem to be necessary given the testimony that you're seeing here from the owner of Savon Plastering admitting in his testimony that they never used inch and a half fasteners. Is that right? That sounds like a proper statement to me. Okay. Given this testimony from Savon Plastering's owner, would you, I understand that you're not currently working with Savon Plastering on any jobs, but would you have concerns at working with them in the future? Check to the form. Yes. Now, looking back at page 103, you saw where I was asking him about 
his testimony where he said he couldn't find the gun that would work with the inch and a half staples. Does that seem peculiar to you? I have to say yes. Because staple guns that would fit an inch and a half staple were commercially available on the market well before this project was started. That would be my understanding. And even if Savon Plastering couldn't find a gun that would work well with an inch and a half staple, they could have used something else that would have met the embedment requirement, like a nail or something like that, right? That sounds reasonable to me. Okay, and even in um, the standards from the ASTM, it provides options for different types of fasteners, like nails being one of them, right? As I recall, yes. Okay. And so, hypothetically, and I guess it's not necessarily hypothetical, so maybe I'll re-ask that. If Mr. Montoya's testimony concerning the reason that he chose to use an inch and a half fastener is truthful, that he couldn't find a gun for some reason um, that would fit the inch and a half fastener, would you have expected as the license holder for the project that he would have then found a different means to use a proper length fastener instead of switching to an improper length fastener? Check to the form. Check the form. Had I been aware, yes. And that would have been your expectation, even if you weren't aware, that you would have expected that your subcontractor would have used a proper length fastener and found the means to do so. I would have expected the subcontractor to achieve what is directed in the ASTM standards. And it's just not possible to achieve that with the inch and a quarter fasteners that he says that he used, right? Check to the form. As best I understand, yes. I just want to clarify for the record that you had several hats that you were wearing with respect to the construction of Windsor Lakes, um, as you've done for, for many other projects, right? We talked a little bit about, I think, yesterday how you served in one role wearing the hat of the superintendent from, I think we clarified yesterday by looking at the emails that it was sometime between June and July of 2012 where you took over the role of the superintendent on Windsor Lakes and wore that hat, right? Yes. Okay. Then in addition to your role as a superintendent, you also had the overall supervisory responsibility for the project as the license holder that was pulling the building permits for all of the buildings that were built by D.R. Horton at the project? Yes, that would be accurate. Okay. And so even for the buildings where you weren't serving as a superintendent, you still had the ultimate responsibility as the license holder to ensure that the work complied with code? Object to the form. Yes. Is there any way for the association through its maintenance performance on a project like Windsor Lakes to correct the deficiencies um, with respect to the use of lath fasteners that don't meet the requirements of the Florida Building Code? Check to the form. Not to my knowledge. Okay. And how about if a control joint is rigidly attached to the wall um, using nails or staples as opposed to wire tied to the discontinuous lath? Is there any way for the association through its maintenance program to correct that code deficiency? Check to the form. Not to my knowledge. Okay. And how about where there's a lack of separation between the stucco and the dissimilar materials? Is there any way for the association through normal maintenance to correct that code deficiency? Not Check to my forward. knowledge. Okay. And how about in areas where there's a lack of head flashing um, or drip cap flashing as we described in your testimony yesterday? Um, is there any way for the association through its normal maintenance practices at a project like Windsor Lakes to correct um, an area where there's missing head flashing at the window to have that to be installed? Check to the form. Not to my knowledge. Okay. Now, where stucco is not properly embedded in the lath, is there any way for the association through its normal maintenance performance to correct that code deficiency? Check to the form. Not to my knowledge. Looking at page 288 of Exhibit 31, do you see the middle photograph on the page? Yes. Okay. Does that middle photograph show that lath is not properly embedded in the stucco as required by the Florida Building Code? Check to the form. It appears not to. 
And you can see that because we can see the lath is exposed in a portion of the sample. Check yes. The form. And a, if the lath were properly embedded in this sample, we should not be able to see any of the lath. It would be completely covered with stucco. Check to the form. To my knowledge, yes. Okay. Now, do we also see in this photograph that there's an excessive number of lath fasteners installed um, in this sample? Check to the form. It appears to be. How about in the photograph at the bottom of the page? Do we see that the um, paperback lath is improperly lapped in the sample? Check to the form. I'm sorry, repeat the question, please. In the sample on the bottom of the page, do we see that the paperback lath is improperly lapped, um, where we can see that it's not lapped paper to paper and metal to metal? Check to the form. That's what it looks like. And do we also see that there's an improper number of fasteners in this sample? Check to the form. Not knowing where the structural member is, it appears so. How about let's look at page 290. Sorry? Uh, 290, page 290. In the middle photograph on page 290, does that um, photo show us the last fasteners installed at this location are not sufficient to meet the requirements of the Florida Building Code? Check to the form. I'm sorry, was, the, was it in reference to the spacing? Um, no, in the last fastener length. The fat fastener length. Sign of objection. It appears to not be. Now, with respect to the number of staples in that photograph, would your testimony also be that the number of staples in this photograph show that um, there's an excessive amount of lath fasteners here? Check to the form. It appears to be. And this sample um, also shows that there's an improper lapping of the paperback lath as well. Check to the form. It appears to be. And the lath is not fully embedded in the sample. Check to the form. I do not view full embedment. How about in the photograph um, at the bottom? Do you see the sample piece at the top right corner of that bottom photograph? Yes. Okay. Does that photograph show lath that's not properly embedded? Check to the form. It appears to not be fully embedded. And we can see that the lath is also rusting in this photograph. Check to the form. There appears to be rust in this photograph. Let's move to page 293 if we can. Looking at the photographs on page 293, we see a vertical control joint installed on the wall. Okay, and all, all of them are just? Yeah, all th they're, all three. I think they're all the same control the same joint, one. just at different angles um, based on the address. But these are all photographs of a vertical control joint, right? Check to the form. That's what it appears to be. Okay. And do each of these photographs also show that the control joint is attached um, using uh, fasteners that are rigidly attaching the control joint to the wall in violation of the Florida Building Code? Check to the form. Yes, it does. Let's look at the photographs on page 302, if we can. Do you see the middle photograph on page 302? Yes. Do you see that the stucco is in direct contact with the window frame in the photograph in the middle of page 302? Uh, 
I'm having okay it appears to be okay. and then towards the right side of the window do you see that there's damage to the wood sheathing yes Check to the form does that show that there's been a failure of the building envelope to provide weather protection of the structure Check to the form that's what I view So let's take a look at photograph on page uh, 310. And do you see the photo at the bottom of page 310? Yes. Okay. And this shows that the stucco is installed in direct contact with the window frame in the photograph in violation of the Florida Building Code? Check to the form. Yes, I see the stucco mud in contact with the window frame, yes. And based on your testimony yesterday, that's also a violation of the Florida Building Code for the stucco to be installed in that manner? Check As to I the form. I understand it, yes. And we can also see that the stucco um, is cracking at this location um, near the window? Check to the form. Yes. Let's turn to the next page if we can. Um, and actually look at page 319, not the next page, but page 319. Do you see the photograph at the bottom of page 319? Do you see the photograph on the bottom of page 319? Yes, I do. Okay. Does that photograph show that there's um, damage to the wood sheathing adjacent to the window frame? Check to the form. Yes, there is. And that would be an example where the building envelope has failed to provide weather protection of the structure in this Ch photograph? Check to the form. That would be correct. Now, one of the purposes we talked about yesterday of providing the separation between the stucco and the window frames is to allow for a code compliant sealant joint to be installed? I'm sorry that I didn't catch the last part of that question. Sure, I'll, I'll rephrase it. Um, one of the purposes of providing the separation between the stucco and the dissimilar window material is to allow for the application of a code compliant sealant joint between the two materials? Yes. Okay. And in the photographs we looked at a moment ago where the stucco was in contact with the dissimilar window material, there was not um, present a code compliant sealant joint at either of those photographs? Check to the form. Not that I could see. Okay. And the purpose of installing um, a code compliant sealant joint at a location such as between the stucco and the window frame is to provide um, for weather sealing capabilities by using sealant? Yes, that would be a accurate statement. And where that's not done, it can lead to um, problems related to water intrusion at locations between the stucco and dissimilar materials like a window frame. That could occur. So I'm going to show you on my iPad here, I've got Exhibit 61 that we looked at yesterday on the computer. Which I believe was an email chain between um, yourself and the Orlando customer care department for DR Horton? Yes, I see that. Okay. And you see in that email where you said, um, this is when Savon quit and Vatos took over? Yes, I see that. Okay. Earlier in your questioning today, um, when Savon's plastering's attorney was asking you questions, you didn't recall whether or not Savon plastering quit. Um, but based on this email, does that refresh your recollection that Savon Plastering did quit at some point in the project? Based on the fact that this is what I wrote, this must have been what happened at the time. I do not recollect this email, but I see it and I take it at face value. Yeah. And, and you wrote this email closer in time to when 
you were working on the Windsor Lakes project? It appears I would have been working in Windsor Lakes at the time. If Savon Plastering hadn't quit, and you had seen the things that you've seen over the course of this deposition during the time that you were working on the Windsor Lake project, would you have fired them? Check to the form. There would have been a problem. Yes. You stated before that uh, if you'd have known about the building code violations allegedly present in the stucco assembly, you would have concerns about hiring Savon Plastering, is that correct? Uh, yes, correct. And is that due in part to your uh, certified builder's license being the responsible for the permits at Windsor Lake? Check to the form. That would be in response to the fact that they're doing work for D.R. Horton in any role that I've held with D.R. Horton. Well, you stated many times that uh, certain things that occurred in this project have caused you concern, correct? Check to the form. I was asked if they would cause me concern, and I answered yes. And is part of that because your license was used to pull the permits for Windsor Lake? Check to the form. In part. Okay, to your knowledge, that's the only way to remedy the uh, violations of the photo building code? I said, form. not to my knowledge, do I know of any way to remedy this other than removing the envelope? 